Thank you for joining today, all those uh, terrible weather. Actually, we arrived yesterday, but we can't uh, move to, uh, on time to the hotel. So thank you very much for coming to uh, this session. And uh, today, we have this uh, subject, S-BOM implementation reality, especially for in Japan. And uh, we, uh, we, our friend, uh, Ayumi Watanabe, has a similar session. So if you are interested in, please join the Watanabe-san session. And uh, from Crow to Walk, the SPDX Lite profile for the first step. And uh, uh, I will introduce uh, later, but uh, we will create it, we created the light profile for SPDX 3.0 for the crawl level, uh, SBOM maturity level, as you know. And uh, for we are created, uh, we have created the light profile for the uh, crawl level company. So. Before starting the session, uh, please let us uh, introduce ourselves uh, briefly. And uh, I'm Norio Kobota from Sony Group Corporation. And uh, I'm a senior open source strategist and uh, a chair of license, uh, internal open source license committee for Sony Group. And uh, also, uh, I am a member of OSPO for all Sony Group. And with open source communities, I am a Sony representative for Open Chain project and uh, one of our contributors to our SPDX project. And uh, recently, uh, I'm not sure you will know about this, uh, Open Chain project kicked off the SBOM study group. And uh, it's, I'm very honored and uh, I was assigned a chair of uh, Open Chain, <coughs> sorry, SBOM study group. And a tag, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's very nice to meet you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining this se our session. Uh, excuse me. So my name is Takashi Ninjoji from Toshiba Corporation, and uh, I'm a chief spiritualist of Toshiba. And uh, I was formerly first head of open source program office in my company. As a, as in the sense, so open source strategy is one of my interesting. And also, the push about the representatives of the open chain pro to the open chain project, and also uh, SPDX contributor, SPDX project to contributor. So, okay, <laughs> it's enough to have an introduction. So, shall we go? Okay. And uh, today, I already introduced. Uh, we contributed to our light profile to our SPDX project. So we'd like to introduce SPDX light, which is a subset specification of the SPDX specification from the version 2.2. And SPDX light is the result of the discussion among the open chain Japan communities and the result of the contribution to the SPDX project. And, uh, uh, sorry, what I'd like to say. Uh, yes, and uh, SPDX Lite is, uh, Japan community are discussing how to uh, use the uh, bonds between the uh, external parties, distribution and uh, receiving timing. And of course, we believe uh, SBOMS requirement is a little bit different from the receiving timing and distributing timing. And uh, so we discussed to clarify what is really required items at each time. And uh, first, we would like to uh, we met these situations. Of course, it is uh, improving, but uh, uh, upstream companies, which doesn't know how to open source software correctly, as well as uh, how to operate the s bonds uh, it's a real, real situation. And uh, there are still a few companies uh, that are not familiar with uh, collect, uh, collect operation uh, with uh, s bonds and what happens in this situation? And uh, as you know, and as you can imagine, they simply download the software from the GitHub 
and uh, creating the S bonds with some SA tools. But in such case, package name is just an archive file name, and of course, license information is completely meaningless value. Of course, this is very extreme as example, but we met uh, similar situations many times. So sometimes we ask them to provide the, uh, key items to investigate for some details about the software. And the idea is, of course, uh, upstream companies to generate the full s uh, such as build the s and so on, and to provide a complete s to us. It's true. But in reality, <laughs> everyone and every community and everyone in this room try hard to uh, improve this situation, we know. But it will take a little while to realize this world. So actually, at, in, uh, currently, we ask the upstream companies to provide the minimum required information uh, in some contract. And after getting these key items, our internal uh, skilled engineers or some specialists analyze more details about the software. This is the uh, actual situation we have. And then, uh, please move on to the distributing timing. And in many cases, uh, we are the commercial company, and uh, we provide the software to the other parties, other companies or end users, other commercial product, commercial software, or commercial services. In such case, when something goes wrong uh, with the software or services, uh, it's very rare case to analyze the details with uh, by uh, other companies, customers. And uh, if vulnerability found, uh, the other companies don't, shouldn't <laughs> fix them and analyze them. So it is our responsibility to fix the vulnerabilities and provide the uh, correct information. And the customers are really, uh, what really customers want to know is what is the problem and where is uh, where uh, the issue is located and uh, what, you know, how it is affected and when it will be solved. So uh, we need to provide such information to the customers. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, okay, the, uh, after fixing these failures, it is, uh, sorry, uh, we need to consider, oh, sorry. Uh, okay, so we believe that the greatest benefit with uh, SBOM and BEX is the ability to provide the required information to each party <laughs> in a common language and format. As I explained, uh, sometimes we made a contract between the external parties to provide the correct information. But these contracts are different for each company. But SBOM specification and BEX specification enable us to provide the common format and common language. It is a very uh, super benefit for us. But uh, of course, uh, only defining a format and uh, uh, common languages, it's not enough, we, uh, we think. So we need to discuss about the process or best practices. And uh, Tuck will explain the process and the guidelines. Thanks, Nori. Uh, so as uh, previously, uh, Nori mentioned about the process management, also SBOM is very key essence for the Organizations, it's how to say it's a, to tr to create the separate chain trust. It's very essential to each stakeholder adopt the process management standards. There is one significant process, I think. 
The open chain project is an initiative that shares the enterprise's uh, experience and the practices of open source management. And uh, there are so many kind of outputs from the project, but the outstanding one is this specification. ISO IC 5230 is op open chain specification is just for the, uh, no, no, not only just for the, but uh, it's intent to the open source license compliance. In this specification, S1 management is required to identify and uh, review and approve open source components. And this is another specification, ISO IC 18974 for the open chain as a open chain security assurance specification. This attend, uh, addresses for the security assurance, uh, security assurance so vulnerability management. S1 management is also required this, imp uh, this specification because it is foundation for managing and uh, sorry, monitoring and managing vulnerabilities across software development lifecycle. So improving sharing the information uh, between the organizations, machine readable data is key. And uh, S1 contains software, S1 uh, contains the S1 uh, composition, uh, so, sorry, software composition and software component uh, problems and the license and copyright information for license compliances. On the other side, VEX, uh, vulnerability exportability exchange. Uh, it's a, man, sorry, uh, VEX is for vulnerability management and exporting uh, vulnerabilities with uh, security advisory and issues, and it's issued at instant responses. Usually, S1 and VEX are binding with CVE and its affected components, <laughs> like this, ah, uh, sorry. In VEX statements, so there are information about the product details and vulnerability details. So in the, in the sense, product details, uh, within product details, some CP or differing S1, and the other side, other side vulnerability details uh, contain the CP. So we are sure many of you have been working on managing software composition before the words S1 uh, become so quite popular now currently. The beginning of SPDX Lite is one such S1 initiative. Uh, SPDX Lite is a subset of SPDX and they're designed to consist a minimum information, uh, information sets like package centric. A bit of history, this is based on the discussion in the Open Chain Japan work group. Uh, some of those companies are responsible for the commercial products, so uh, such organizations should analyze by themselves about their components, as Nori explained be, pre, uh, previously. So there are so many properties in SPDX. So uh, one discussion point was to investigate how to minify uh, properties according to their practices. Okay, Nori, we'll take about the SPDX light of SPDX support. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, next, uh, as you know, SPDX 3.0 have been uh, released uh, previous Open Source Summit, Open Source Summit North America. So we revised SPDX Lite and contribute them to the SPDX project. And uh, firstly, we'd like to introduce the SPDX Lite design principle. Because uh, SPDX Lite is coming from license compliance. So SPDX Lite is essentially considered the minimum in license information required to comply the open source license compliance. But uh, of course, uh, these uh, principles we decided. Firstly, there is no difference uh, between the original spec. However, uh, adding recommendation on what to write. As I explained, some parties uh, fill out the uh, archived file name and the package name. So we needed to clarify what to write as a value. And secondly, providing license information is not mandatory in original 3.0 spec. But of course, uh, light profile is coming from license compliance. We 
uh, decided to, it's mandatory to fill out. And the last one is uh, just a recommendation. As you may know, license compliance work is a very, very time consuming work. So some information can be get from the upstream company. The uh, auditor is uh, decreasing their works. So we recommend to fill out some uh, key and values as much as possible. And uh, everything else is optional. Um, sorry. Okay, these are the uh, light profile design principle. And here's the overview data structure for light profile. As Tak explained, uh, we are considered at the passing package level information correctly is the most important thing. And the first step for the detailed analysis of the software by specialists. And uh, of course, this information is uh, less than full S-bomb, so it is uh, acceptable for the cloud level company. And we assume, uh, okay. And so far, we introduced the uh, specification perspective. And the uh, SPDX Lite is a much uh, fairly simple specification, we believe. But at the same time, we also believe it's a little bit difficult uh, for, to understand the SPDX and SPDX Lite from lead, only leading the specification. So we we've studied to create a very, very simple example to check if it fits to our use cases. And today, I'm sorry, uh, we don't have enough time to explain each key items, but uh, we will uh, publish these examples on the GitHub. So if you are interested in, please check it out later. And of course, SPDX Lite is coming from the license compliance, but the uh, SBOM is coming from a security perspective. So we are now, uh, we of course discussed with a security perspective. And we are worked, uh, we worked with security engineers in open chain, not only open chain Japan working group, but also SPDX working group. And this and created, uh, if it works well, uh, with uh, SPDX Lite and the security profile. And these examples are also provided on the GitHub. And uh, we are discussing on the GitHub, uh, SPDX GitHub repository. And uh, I'm not sure, SPDX project has uh, current, currently uh, using repository or example repository or some kind of uh, to say, <laughs> some trial repository. Many, there are many repositories, but once decided, we are, we will contribute these ex examples to the SPDX repository. And so next talk will, uh, when created with these examples, uh, we consider several regulations and guidelines in the world. So next talk will introduce such uh, works. Thank you, Nori. Uh, So Nori uh, talked about uh, how to express the uh, SBOM in JSON LD format. But uh, next, I'd like to uh, talk about the uh, other aspects, just the elements. So there are many rules and regulations, standards, and guidelines. It's mentioned SBOM clearly or just imply. So if the text of these documents uh, if, uh, in, in the document, if there are no SBOM and BX literally, but some require, require them according to the gist of the document. So these are very part of that. There are so many documents, uh, might, be, might be. After executive order 14028 uh, and the uh, NTS minimum elements for SBOM, many uh, governments and industrial organizations have a place to discuss about uh, SBOM and uh, publish their documents. 
Uh, many of them refer to MTA minimum elements. It's better in of us to be aware of the CISA framing software transparent, uh, component transparency third edition. It is under the review of two leads, but uh, this candidate is publicly available. So this document will be updated of the MTA elements. Oops. Sorry. The, as many of you may already know, so two, two data formats uh, based on the open source activities is well used. So one is ISO IEC 52, uh, sorry, uh, 5962 uh, SPDX, and the other one is Cyclone DX. It's standardized by ECMA 4424. And uh, industry, there is uh, some kind of industry driven activities for the SBOM. So, like uh, medical devices and the credit payment and automotive, and also telecom, case, uh, telecom industry. In, uh, actually, one information. So as previously Nori mentioned about the, in Japan, maybe uh, the Ministry of Tra uh, Economy and Trade, uh, Economy, Trade and Industry uh, has published the second version of SBOM guidelines for Japanese companies. So maybe, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, again, so Watanabe san give, will give the other session to uh, how this Japan, what is going on in Japan? So maybe she will talk about this second uh, new version of the documents. So I hope uh, you are interested in her talk. Well, uh, we would like to take a look at some contents. And, uh, I'm sorry, this is a <laughs> busy. Uh, busy and <laughs> just in work in progress table. But uh, this is a table to compare elements with better elements. And what elements are required and uh, how are they mapped in SVOM and SVOM data formats such as SPDX and Cyclone DX. Might be many people uh, have a similar works like this and uh, this is also the same one. But uh, we are working on Google spreadsheet openly, so please access and uh, we really appreciate any comments and your help. Uh, we will try, in this talk, we will try to pick up uh, something somehow as characteristic one. But however, uh, this, again, a uh, very busy one, so I hope it will be okay to give the, your uh, some overview of this table. Uh, please make uh, access to the spreadsheet and uh, sorry, and uh, any otherwise your comment is really welcomed. Oh, sorry. And uh, so far, so in various SBOM requirements, they refer to NTR as minimum elements. So in NTR, board text, board text and the normal text is divided, spread. I like them. But the board is required and the normal is recommended. But if you engage in the practice, maybe CSA's baseline attributes seem more effective. It would be nice when we make S bombs, so it will meet the baseline attribute, I think. So copyright, in the sense, the so component hash, uh, it name, change the name as a cryptographic hash, is uh, to direct modification. And the uh, license and the copyright are for open source license components. It's just a really necessity. And uh, on the other hand, external data, uh, it's a little bit, has a discussion because if we use this information for just unique ident just for identifying the unique identification, maybe this is uh, assimilated into unique identifier. Okay, let's compare the baseline attributes. So the left side, the red red left is CSS uh, baseline elements, and the next red red left is uh, NTR minimum elements. And the third one, the blue, is open chain table SM guide. It's elements based on the 5962 or and the SPDX 2.3. The, this work is this effort is by the Telecom Working Group of Open Chain Project, so which an initiative of telecom industry companies like uh, Nokia and Ericsson. And also, it is intended for telco industry, but uh, apparently, so it is not for the telecom industry, but also other industries, okay. And also, 
the green one is the SP side and the cyclone DX is the next green. So also these are very good covers for the NTR, uh, sorry, uh, thesis baseline elements. And the, uh, ah, sorry, it hmm? Excuse me. And the, Okay, sorry. The CSAS uh, uh, framing third edition uh, provides uh, information. So the table with the comparison table to SPDX, uh, ISO SPDX, and also SPDX 3.0, the Cyclone DX. So please look, take a look at uh, this, that, that kind of document. And uh, on the other hand, so SPDX likes of 50. Uh, so the 5962, lack of some attributes such as relationship and the cryptography hash because depends on the how to minimize for the uh, properties for the license compliances. Okay, so next one is BSI. So BSI, a uh, German agency, take care of information security, provides a guideline about the S bomb for preparing CRA. The light version, uh, sorry, just looking at the attributes, telco, lights, CDX covers well. Besides guidance specifically, mention some properties, one, two properties for the uh, characteristics. The one for the SP, SMO meta document, if it's uh, downloadable via internet, SMO URI, and also the source code URI. But anyway, the telco, lights, and CDX covers well. Next one is, uh, we would like to get guidance from uh, three. Uh, I'm the LF and the FDA. This uh, tends to medical device manufacturers. The, because these are based on the NTA minimum elements, so teleco, light, CDX covers well. But however, FDA and MDF require support, uh, additional information for support, relating to supports. Uh, such as software level support and the uh, end of support date or life cycle of the device. But the SPDX 3.0, uh, sorry, SPDX 3.0 supported these elements. So optionally, SPDX Lite is supported. By the way, uh, I've heard there is a discussion about whether these uh, attributes, properties should be included in the SMO document. Uh, because this depends on the how to say, business, some kind, somehow, business situation. It may happen to issue updated SMO by such business edition, even though there are no change components. So some argues this affects the stability of SMO uh, operation. This is the last table, the compared of this talk. So let's look at payment card industry data security standard. Uh, PCI also refers NTA minimum elements. But uh, I couldn't find any text about the uh, I did mention about the uh, cryptographic hash and the uh, license permission. So this is my personal my guess, but uh, PCI might be intended to the service operations, not for the say, some uh, license compliance or so. So it's a uh, set of the PCIs. But uh, anyway, Teleco, Lights, CDX are okay for this. In this presentation, uh, we have taken a brief look at the attributes of this bomb, but besides, there are many things to take care of. We need to enhance the S bomb and BEX practice as practices across the supply chain. These five are just an example S bomb maturity model, the elements or attributes of S bomb, the S bomb and the, the BEX, how dividing. This affects the information interoperability, I guess. So, example, BSI's guideline. Uh, argues top component of outside of delivery should be included. If so, uh, how to express that kind of relationship in SBDX or CycleDX? Another example is rating digital signature. If we use signed SMOM and signed BX, SMOM and BX, uh, it should be up to date, but there should each be operated separately or have a different relationship. 
if we use reference relationship, in which direction back to S1 or S1 vice versa, or S1 embed, uh, embedded, uh, sorry, back embedded S1 is preferable? Uh, there are various possibility use cases, so we need to discuss more the S1 operation in also distributor, constraint, and also how to exchange this kind of information. So also we should be aware of of the S1 and BX uh, in the software development lifecycle hold, as a whole. So we need a process and the tools that anyone in the supply chain can implement. So some of my, okay, so not limited to this, there's still maybe an issue to be uh, clarified, but uh, <laughs> address for this, uh, this, so, can we explore protocols, uh, practical how to or so? Okay, thank you, Tak. And uh, this is the last slide. And uh, finally, with uh, cooperation with the uh, Open Chain Board members, we launched, uh, uh, as I explained, uh, we launched the uh, SBOM study group uh, in July. And we kicked off the SBOM study group on July 13th. And uh, focusing, this study group will discuss process issues and best practices, and uh, focusing on how to use SBOM. And uh, fortunately, as Tak said, an open chain project has already published the Teleco SBOM guidelines. And we believe it's very practical from the uh, company perspective, company industry perspective. So we hope that uh, guidelines to refine it and will expand some other industries. And uh, of course, we know there are many, many SBOM study group or SBOM communities, such as Shisa SBOM, SPDX, Cyclone DX, and so on. So we'd like to collaborate with them. Actually, we joined SBOM, CISA SBOM group or SPDX. And uh, what, I'm sorry, I don't join to discuss with the Cyclone DX communities, but I joined the Slack of the Cyclone DX and uh, referred some specifications and uh, you know, investigate some uh, specifications. So we'd like to collaborate with other communities and uh, we'll discuss about how to, what is a uh, correct, correct or proper process and and uh, uh, activities with uh, SBOM, how to use SBOM. So we appreciate your help. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. Uh, so it's going to cover the S bomb quality topic from the telco industry. Uh, yes. And uh, this is a uh, Google Calendar next meeting uh, schedule. So we will distribute this presentation later. So you can join uh, from this URL. Yeah. Please. Uh, Shane, are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Please. <laughs> There are no, uh, oh, wait, 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 May I ask you something? Ah, uh, sorry. Please. Uh, 
Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I'm not sure there is uh, some uh, SPDX guide, but uh, uh, SPDX project has a license, a short license identifier repository, so you can contribute to the uh, uh, short identifier. But uh, it's a very legal topic uh, among them. So well, there might be some discussion where we occurred. So another one is uh, when we use the license information as according to the SPDX license identifier, it's based on the F3 Software Foundation Europa's reuse project. And in a sense, so if the license is not covered by the SPDX license identifier, you can make a that can I know, all uh, indications like, uh, like uh, from the top of the text, license leave hyphen, it is okay. So it's a little bit, I don't know, techniques to, <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. But uh, it will be uh, improved in near future. Okay, uh, it's almost time to finish. Thank you. Uh, if you have any question, please uh, let us know. We will answer. Thank you for attending. Thank you very much. Uh, before you outside the room, so may I ask one question? So, how many people using the SPDX? Oh, really? How many people using a cycle the cycle? Oh, both. Oh, fuck. <laughs> the reason why I ask is uh, Toshiba is uh, somehow the middle layer of the supply chain. So we need to, uh, no. how to say, um, so compliant to the business requirements. So uh, obviously, so we are member of the Linux Foundation. Is BDX is the Linux Foundation project, but also cycle is important for the to read the information. So just for my uh, curiosity, I ask you. But uh, hey. thank you so much for your answer. Thank you. Thank you. And thank attack, you. it's time.